Hey everybody, my name is Mike Deal and I'm going to be your instructor for AIT 1203 Mechanical Installations. We are going to cover a little bit of everything from, from the very basics to, to, of uh, hand tools to uh, proper installation, balancing, uh, and machine alignment uh, as we go through this class and a little bit of everything in between. Uh, a lot of you have already uh, worked with a lot of the equipment and the tools and the procedures that we're going to be working with in this class. Some of you are already out there in the field, but what we're finding is uh, in the lab in particular, we're having a lot of students come in that don't really understand the proper use of even basic and simple hand tools. So we're going to start on the very basic level. Um, I know some of you may have, like I said, have already had experience with this, but you know, bear with us as we kind of get everybody up to speed uh, and on the same level. Uh, if you have any questions or you got any comments or you know need any help or assistance with anything uh, in this class, by all means email me uh, or you can stop by the lab. I'm in the lab a lot during the uh, uh, fall semester. So uh, you know, just look me up, email me, or leave me a message on my voicemail. I'd be glad to get right back with you. But anyway, uh, we're going to get started. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to talk about some basic hand tools, okay? Um, Again, like I said, we are seeing a lot of students come in uh, who have never had exposure, or at least the correct exposure, on how to use proper hand tools. So we're going to take it down to the very basic level. First thing we're going to start talking about is the uh, primary function of each tool, the proper uses, and also the common improper uses. Like, like I said, we see a lot of that in the lab sometimes. Okay? We're also going to talk, after each uh, tool that we talk about, or each type of uh, family of tool, we're going to talk about the required personal protective equipment or PPE uh, and the safety gear that's required uh, in order to get the job done properly and safely without losing any fingers or eyes or anything like that. Okay, So uh, the most significant uh, factors when it comes to hand tools okay, is the quality and the maintenance of the hand tools. Okay, um, As far as quality, quality costs you more money, but if this is your profession, uh, this is why you're in the classes. Uh, and going through the program. Uh, if this is your profession, invest in your profession. Invest in yourself and invest in good quality tools. Now, I'm not going to uh, promote or rep any particular brand of tools. Um, do your research, though. Um, I will tell you that the quality coming from some foreign countries, in particular uh, third world countries, uh, the quality uh, and their quality assurance is just non-existent. You get some really cheap tools, you get some inexpensive tools, you can, you can buy inexpensive tools all day long, particularly on the internet, uh, and you get exactly what you pay for. So when it's time to go to work in, the, in, the, in a particular plant or in an environment, in an industry or whatever, wherever you wind up at, you're going to want to make sure you get quality tools. I've had some cheap ones before in the past, uh, and I'm telling you, they aren't worth the trouble to go buy them. Okay? So uh, make sure you buy good quality tools. We're also going to talk about the maintenance. A lot of people think that once you buy the tool, you're good to go. But no, tools need maintenance, just like equipment. They are sort of pieces of equipment, so they need maintenance as well. So we're going to cover those things too. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is the hammer. Everybody seems to like to grab a hammer when it's time to go to work. Okay, uh, This is a good thing sometimes, but uh, I'm going to talk about the, the proper hammer for the proper application. Uh, the first one we're going to talk about is the, the most common types are the claw hammer. Most of you probably seen some of those. Uh, the ball peen hammer and the engineer's hammer. Okay, so get forward, moving forward with it, the claw hammer. Okay, and also be sure that you are taking notes throughout this lecture uh, because I can tell you you're going to see them in the lab. But you're going to make sure you know this material in the lab. It's going to come back and uh, you'll make, you want to make sure you know it. It's also going to be on some of the quizzes as well. So make sure you're taking good notes in the lecture and also while you're reading. This will accompany, but it's the uh, textbook material, but it is not uh, the same. So, okay. Uh, the first type of claw hammer we got here, or uh, type of hammer is the claw hammer. You can have a single piece hammer, or you can have a two piece, which is the, uh, basically broken down uh, into a head and a handle. And so this is an image of a <clears throat> single piece. You'll notice there is no delineation between the, the head and the hammer it's, uh, handle itself. Okay, but uh, basically, there's, it's got really one function, and that is to drive and remove nails. Okay, seems pretty straightforward, but uh, we want to drive the nail in there with a claw hammer, not a ball peen hammer or some other type of hammer. This is carpenter. You're using, using um, uh, uh, 
claw hammers for carpentry type of work, okay? So they're designed to strike nails, drive nails properly, okay? And they are also designed to take nails out, removing the nails. You'll notice that the hammer here has, this is where they get the claw from, okay? It looks like a claw, and it's buried in, in, uh, in the angle of the claw, so it can accommodate several different types of nails, or several different sizes of nails, okay? So you want to uh, properly use the, the, the uh, claw hammer to extract the nail out of wood, okay? Um, and then there's a little trick here, you, as you get longer nails here, you might you also, uh, there's a trick you can use, you can put a block of wood up under here. That does us two things for us. Number one, it allows us to take out a longer nail. Uh, you can see this, long, this nail is pretty long, and once we push the handle over and, and start to pull it out, we may run out of, uh, of leverage here with our, hand, with our head once it rolls over past a certain point. Okay, so a way to do that, uh, or remedy that, is to stick a block on, or under the head and it gives you additional extension there and then it can pull the longer nails out. Also, this block keeps you from marring finishes, okay? So, uh, just keep that tucked away in your uh, back pocket when you're looking at the claw hammer or looking to use one. Okay, let's go over the parts of a hammer, okay? A lot of people don't realize there's more than just a head and a handle, okay? So, well, you want to be able to know how to, to identify this. And uh, the first one is, some of these are going to be common to the other uh, hammers we're going to look at, but we're going to look at the, uh, the uh, claw hammer first. First thing, probably the most important, is the face. This is the part that actually strikes the nail when you're driving it in. And if it's a different type of hammer, uh, it, would, it would strike something else, but they all have the face right here, okay? Also, the bell, this is the circumference that's right behind the striking area of the hammer, too. This is known as the bell, okay, and the neck. This is the shallow neck, or the, uh, the, uh, the, the uh, more narrow part right behind the head and the back of the body of, of the hammer, too, okay. This is the cheek, okay, this is the side facing of the hammer right here. Now, one thing a lot of people like to do is they'll grab a hammer and they just got a little extra tap to do, they'll start striking uh, with the cheek of the hammer not a good idea okay it's not designed for that okay the head is tempered a little bit differently than it is the cheek so always use the face for driving the cheek is not used for driving um, nails or anything else or striking anything else we talked about the claw already okay this is where you'll slide it up under the nail uh, and extract the nail from from some type of a wood from wood um, this is the handle this part from right here okay from here is the handle and of course you've got the grip all right. A lot of times the handle and the grip are made into one, or particularly wooden handles. But these are the parts of the claw hammer. Okay, make sure you know these. All right. Um, as a, <clears throat> I want to make this point real clear: claw hammers are not designed to strike other tools except for nails. Okay, the nail, being the nails is the fastener. Okay, uh, they are not designed to strike punches and chisels and things. If you, prime example, you go to an automotive repair shop, for example. Um, you won't see guys, if they're good quality mechanics, okay, um, you will not see a claw hammer in their, in their toolbox knocking out uh, wrist pins or, uh, you know, trying to break uh, uh, brake drums off or, or uh, calipers off of a, of, a, of a vehicle. They're going to be using the proper hammer, which is probably a, a ball peen hammer, uh, but we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But anyway, this is the claw hammer. I want to go ahead and just talk about that just a little bit. You will have a need for these every now and then. Uh, in your job uh, out in the industry, but most of the time, no, but I still want to talk about it anyway. Okay, now this, um, the, the way that the hammer is attached, this, the reason I'm bringing this up, this is part of the maintenance part that we talked about with the, with the hammer. Okay, you've got a typically a hickory, uh, which is very hard wood, you've got a hickory handle right there. Okay, and you slide the head uh, of the hammer. Um, this hammer over that hickory handle like that, okay? Well, it doesn't just stay there, and one thing uh, a lot of people will make a mistake is they feel like if they pound the, the head on it, it'll just stay on there, it'll kind of uh, wedge itself on there. That's not the way it works. Um, this hammer I've got right here, uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but there is a slit right in the top of this handle, okay? It's running uh, vertically, is the way I hold the hammer right now, okay? This hammer's got a slit in it, and you slide the head over there, and it will try to close the slit up in the uh, head right there once you slide it over. However, you've got a couple of wedges that you've got to put in there. Number one, the first one is a wooden wedge, and that's the one you'll drive uh, in, the, in the vertical slit 
of, of this hammer right here, okay? We'll drive that in there, okay? And we get it in there, and it will hold it in there nice and tight, but you're not done yet, okay? You've also got these, uh, these other wedges right here, these stakes, some, they're sometimes called, okay? And then you'll put these in there, not quite 90 degrees in the head, and drive it in there. That uh, cinches the uh, wooden uh, wedge into the hammer. Uh, handle and it makes sure that that wooden uh, wedge doesn't come out. You can see this ball peen that, that I'm using. You do the same thing with the, with a uh, with a claw hammer, but it's it's uh, at a slight, not quite 90 degrees, but it's over here and it's holding that wooden wedge that's in there vertically. It's been smoothed over, machined over, really nice. This is a uh, pretty this is a pretty good hammer, hammer right here. Uh, but anyway, the reason I went ahead and talked about this, regardless of the type of hammer that you're using. Um, it is uh, the hammer replacement, just it's all the same, okay? Uh, but you got a couple of different wedges and you have a couple of hickory handles. Now, if you've got a metal handle, um, you know, and, and you, the, you, the head's loose, it's ready to come off, I would highly re recommend replacing that all together. Truthfully, uh, you can replace these, but you can buy hammers pretty cheap. Uh, it, relatively speaking, don't buy a cheap hammer, but you know, they're not terribly expensive. Um, and also, you run the risk, you know, of, of, the, of the head flying off and things like that. I prefer to buy a new one, but that's, that's just me, okay? But anyway, regardless of it, whether it's a engineer's hammer, a claw hammer, a ball peen hammer, whatever, that's the way that you go about uh, attaching the head or reattaching the head should it come off or if you were to split the handle or break it for some reason, you need to replace it, you could uh, yeah, put a new handle in there like that, okay? Uh, again, this is the, you see, you kind of, I blew this image up for you. This is an engineer's hammer. We were talking about it in a minute. There's that vertical slice right there. Uh, slit right there, and we would drive a wedge in there, uh, the wooden wedge, and then we'd come in at another angle like this with the steel wedge to secure the wooden wedge in there as well. Okay, uh, just more pictures of that. All right, and then finally we've got one right here, uh, shows that uh, how it's been done. All right, and that's how you secure a new handle to a hammer. If should you break one or tear one up, uh, you can clean out the old hammer from uh, handle from the hole in the, in the head, and just drive it down there, kind of. Uh, sent you down there and then start putting your wedges in there to make sure that they come flying off when you're trying to use it. Okay, uh, really the biggest thing for uh, using a claw hammer is your safety glasses. Um, can't tell you, you know, when you strike something, particularly if you don't have a good quality tool, a lot of times the pieces will fly off the hammer handle, or excuse me, the hammer head, uh, and it's very dangerous. Uh, so, uh, safety glasses always on this. It's a little hard to, to use uh, leather gloves when you're trying to drive nails. So once you get the nail started, pull your, handle, your hand back and drive the nail. One other thing too I want to talk to you about, I failed to mention, when you are gripping a hammer, okay, I see this a lot, uh, guys want to grab hold of that hammer up there and choke up on that thing and start beating it like this. You grip the hammer back here in, this, in the, uh, uh, the grip back here, uh, it gives you more leverage, it gives you more uh, force when you are trying to uh, drive the hammer. And also, a lot of times, when you're driving a hammer, you don't get enough uh, force to drive the hammer of the nail into the wood. Winds up, all you're doing is wind up bending the nail. Okay, you need to put to give that a, a solid force to, to force that, and not give that ham, uh, nail a chance to bend or bend over. Uh, you want to just drive it as hard as you can, uh, safely, of course. But you want to get the most leverage and force by holding it back here and not up here. Okay, so I see that a lot. Okay. If you've got small nails, yeah, it's a tendency to hold it up like that. But if you're using small nails, use a small hammer, okay? Use an appropriate hammer. But uh, that's what I see a lot of, okay? So, uh, anyway, going back to where we were, using the safety glasses. Now, the next hammer I want to talk about is the ball peen. This hammer is designed for striking punches and chisels. Um, it can also be used to shape some sheet metal, sheet metal, excuse me, not sheet metal, uh, sheet metal, uh, like I said, is not designed for driving uh, the uh, the nails. Um, this ball peen hammer I've got here, okay, this is for this side right here, obviously for striking uh, chisels, punches, uh, other tools that, that are uh, necessary. Um, this is the peening side. This is what you use, this nice round shape uh, for shaping metal, on, particularly on radiuses, okay. Uh, you can you can lightly uh, shape and form softer metals such as aluminum and things like that. You see a lot of these used in, in uh, uh, body shops as well or sheet metal shops, uh, even HVAC when you're trying to shape uh, and form metal. But that's it's designed that way uh, with the rounded surfaces so it can put a nice smooth finish. Okay, and it will work metal better than uh, any other type of hammer. Okay, 
Um, again, it's, it's designed for uh, punches. This one is not a ball peen hammer. This is this is uh, a different type. It is a different type of uh, peening hammer, but it's not a ball peen. But I put it up here just to show the image of the chisel. All right. Um, and then these are punches as well. Now, this kind of goes back to um, what I was talking to you about the uh, quality of the tool. Uh, you've got the striking in that you strike the, the punch. Uh, th these punches are used for alignment. Um, I've got a couple of, of uh, examples up here. That they could be uh, straight punches. Um, they could be center punches, okay? Or these could be cold chisels, all right, chisels. Um, and you strike these uh, with the, with the uh, the uh, face of the ball peen hammer. But this is where you get to kind of um, get into the quality of the tool. This is why this is so important, okay? What you'll find is that the cheaper made tools are not tempered properly, the metal is not tempered and hardened properly, and you wind up with a soft tool. You, if you're striking with a hard hammer, you got a soft tool. You wind up mushrooming these, uh, these heads right here, and you wind up with a mushroom. These pieces right here in this illustration are actually chunks of metal flying off. The reason I put that picture up there is because that happened to me once. Um, I, was, I was a kid, uh, but I was working on something and uh, I had a punch and I struck it with a hammer. It was a cheap punch, um, it was one of my dad's, <laughs> but uh, a little small piece flew off and it flew into my arm and I, you know, it hurt like crazy. Uh, they had to actually dig it out with a magnet. But you know that does happen. I remember when I hit it, I saw a spark. I was like, you know, from striking with a hammer, and it came off and it hit me in the arm. So, you know, it could have very well gone in my eyes that I've been, you know, the orientation had been wrong or something like that, or different, I should say. Um, but be careful with these. Always buy quality tools. You know, if you're going to do the job and, and do it right. Okay. But I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience. Yeah, that, that kind of happened to me. So, uh, but uh, anyway, um, on the end of these. Um, of these uh, chisels, you'll find a chamfer um, right here. Okay, some of these are chamfered on the heads right there, and also these should be flat on these surfaces. Should be very flat uh, and, very, and very perpendicular to the shaft here. But you know, it's kind of hard to see. Each one of these shafts uh, or punches has a chamfered edge. Okay, like this. Okay, and what happens after use? Uh, it becomes mushroomed over, gets soft, it's, uh, it's work hard and it starts to split. And the tool actually becomes less effective at, at driving uh, the, uh, the uh, punch and whatever it is you're trying to drive in, uh, it becomes less effective. So, uh, you know, there's some ways to clean these up. Some people I've seen cut them off. The problem with that is, is if the heat treating only goes so far and you cut them off, then you've lost that heat treating and then you're going to have a soft punch from, from there on out. Uh, you can grind them and clean them up a little bit from these on these edges and try to put the chamfer back on there. Uh, again, with, um, after a certain amount of time, the best thing to do really is just to replace the, the, uh, the uh, punch itself, okay? Uh, and <clears throat> you'll notice here in this particular punch I've got here, I'll try to hold it up here for the camera. Uh, it's got a slight chamfer. I'll hold it up. You'll notice that the body right here of the punch starts to taper a little bit like that, okay? But um, Again, my message to you is buy quality tools, take care of them, uh, and try not try to avoid getting in situations like that, having a, having a toolbox or a tool chest full of uh, uh, tools like that. Okay, when we're using um, the ball peen hammer, particularly when you're using some type of punch, there's a couple of uh, different uh, items of PPE. Again, personal protective equipment that you use. Safety glasses. Okay, again, like I said, when I was when I was the uh, kid and I was just very lucky that it went in my arm and it didn't go into my eye or something like that. Safety glasses always. Uh, leather gloves uh, because you will occasionally miss, okay, you will miss that hammer sometimes. Uh, it will protect your hand as opposed to just the bare skin, okay. Also if, if a piece were to fly off the tool, uh, you're protected by the leather, leather glove. Sometimes there's, there's punch and chisel holders that you can uh, attach to the tool keeps your hand out of the path of the hammer striking the tool. So uh, those, those are available as well. So you might just look around and see what, uh, make sure you've got the right uh, PPE and the, and the right equipment to, to do the job and do it safely, okay? Now, there's another type of, of hammer and it's known as the uh, engineer's hammer. This is also a, a tool designed for striking punches and chisels, driving wrist pins into larger pieces of, of equipment. Uh, incidentally, uh, it got its name 
from the railroad era. Okay, the engineer would, would keep one of these hammers in his toolbox because he would often have to drive uh, pins into uh, clevises and things like that uh, to do a little bit of light maintenance went before they uh, took out. But that's where it got its name, the engineer's hammer. Okay, it's, if, as you can see, it's a heavier handle. A lot of times, this is called a mini or baby sledge. Okay, uh, but it's uh, much heavier than than the uh, than the uh, ball peen hammer. Okay, and it's, it's designed to, to give a, a, a much more stout blow uh, to whatever it is we're striking. Okay, but uh, you know, it's a little heavier. I've, I've worked around these a lot. I've used these a lot. Um, so they're, not, they're necessary, they're absolutely a necessity uh, when you're trying to reassemble or disassemble some pretty heavy equipment, okay? So anyway, uh, but that's an engineer's uh, hammer. Again, just like uh, the ball peen, um, you want to make sure that you've got the proper PPE. Uh, it would be a bad idea to use a chisel holder if you're having to use that, but most of the time you're striking something uh, that's, that you're not going to actually uh, be in danger of uh, hitting your hand. But uh, always wear your gloves and always wear your uh, PPE or your safety glasses as well. Okay. So now the th I want to go ahead and stop this right here um, to kind of give you a break here. Uh, it does a couple of things for us. Um, number one, it breaks it up by topic. Uh, the videos by uh, lecture videos by topic, which is always good, and also is easier to upload uh, into our YouTube channel, and also it, it makes it easier for you to watch. Uh, and download if you need to. So I want to stop right here and we're going to uh, you know, just uh, move into the next sec section which is wrenches and we'll go from there. But for right now uh, just kind of take a break and come back and then watch the next section of this lecture. Okay? If got, again if you got any questions by all means get a hold of me and we will uh, you know, talk about whatever it is you need to talk about. Okay? Appreciate you watching. Thanks and we'll talk to you later.